general guideline, right? I'll give it to you, simple. There are two spheres of human involvement or human actions. The first sphere is a natural sphere. In other words, a sphere which we interact and do things because we're human beings. We eat, we drink, we dress, we go to work, we speak languages, we take communications and take vehicles. This is the natural sphere. With regards to the natural realm, how do we know something is natural? Because everybody does it, regardless of religion. Everybody does it. If you're in America, pretty much everybody dresses in a certain way. Religion doesn't dictate it. Mm -hmm. If you're in Pakistan, Christians and Muslims dress in a similar way. If you're in other lands, there are other things as well. Cuisine, food, that's a natural thing. With regards to natural uh, daily activities that we do, professions you choose, you want to be an engineer, doctor, whatever. The general rule, now pay attention to this, the general rule, everything is permissible. Unless our sharia gives you something prohibited. So if you want to dress in a certain way, somebody says, my dear brother, Akhi, you can't dress like that. He has to tell you why not. You don't have to prove, oh, this is permissible to dress like this. He has to prove, what does he have to prove? That it's not permissible. That it's not permissible. Yes. The general rule, everything is permissible when it comes to your daily activities of natural life. Mm -hmm. You understand that point? Yes. Okay. There's another few. I said there's two things men do, human beings. First is natural things. Eating, drinking, dressing, cuisine, etc. The second thing they do is religious acts. How do you know something is religious? Because it varies from religion to religion. If you're in America, you're both going to be dressed the same, you like the same food, but the Christian will go to church on Sunday, the Muslim will go to Jama'ah on Friday. That's a religious act. Okay, with regards to religious acts, the rule is exactly reversed. Which rule? The first rule that I said. Yes. Which is? The first rule was everything is permissible unless proven otherwise. With regards to religious acts, it's the exact opposite. Everything is impermissible unless you prove this is permissible. In other words, somebody comes and says, I want to worship Allah today by dancing around and clapping and doing something like that. You say, brother, that's not allowed. He says, what's your evidence It's not allowed? You don't have to quote evidence. He has to quote evidence that it is allowed. The burden of proof lies, the burden of proof lies upon somebody who does an action of worship. Gotcha. Whereas natural acts, the burden of proof lies upon somebody who? Somebody who wants to do what? Someone who wants to... Prohibit it. Prohibit it. Yeah, natural acts. Yeah. Somebody says, you can't eat this food. That food is not allowed. You don't have to prove it's allowed. You say, look, food is allowed unless you prove to me it's not. Somebody says, Allah says, pork is haram. You say, okay, that's fine. Okay, Allah says, alcohol is not... Okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you got any other type of meal which has various elements of halal and the process of never ate it, okay? Okay, national dish of Pakistan is biryani, right? You know biryani. Yeah. Everybody knows biryani, right? The process of never ate biryani. In fact, he never ate rice. Somebody comes and says, that's a bid'ah. That's an innovation. You're doing something the Prophet didn't do. Your response is, Akhi, you don't know the meaning of bid'ah. You don't know the meaning of innovation. Innovation cannot occur in worldly actions. Innovations can only occur in religious actions. So if I want to make a nice uh, sports coat, or if I want to... Go ahead. Uh, innovate a nice uh, sports car to go faster. Excellent. Or, 